We are building a custom closet door here. I know there's all the rage with the whole barn door sliding style. And if you go to the store, you'll see a couple of different options. They've got your six panel, your flat panel, your two panel with the arch. They've got some that kind of look like they're a barn door, but nothing's really barn door. So what we've done is we're taking that concept and we're doing a how-to video how to make your own door. So what we have is some rustic wood that's got the gray stain on it and we bought a full length mirror and we're gonna frame our own door, put a mirror on it. So when we're done, we're gonna have a sliding barn door with the black hardware, but it's gonna be in a rustic gray barn board with a full size mirror in the door. So it'll not just be a door over the closet, but it'll be a dressing mirror as well. When in doubt, design two in one. All right, so let's get to it. No reason to waste any more time. All right, so basically all we have for building materials is some rustic barn board. This is actually not from a barn. It's brand new material. It's available at the local building store. I'm not sure how long this trend is gonna be around. So if you wanna do something like this, get on it while you can. Um, our mirror here is five feet by 16 inches. And Max has conveniently ducked out of the reflection on that shot. Well, here you go. Our hole that we're trying to cover is 33 inches. So I could have bought a 34 inch door. I could have bought a 36 inch door. But instead I'm gonna build my own. They come in one by eights. Wow, that's actually almost eight inches. Nice, usually it's a little shorter. If I put that together side by side and picture frame my mirror, I'm still not gonna be wide enough. So what I'm gonna do is I've ripped a couple of boards down. I'm gonna take advantage of the width of this board and I'm gonna interior picture frame it, then add my barn board and then exterior frame it as well. That way my door is wider than the hole. You don't wanna have a situation where you're relying on the, how you level your door and how you build your house to be perfectly level all the time. So when you have a sliding door, make sure your door is bigger than your hole. That way when you close it, you can't see what's behind and you don't have the vantage point of things lining up to see all those little errors. That's a good idea. All you need to do this is basically a drill, some mending plates, there's a lot of different kinds. Um, so find out what you like to work with, some screws and some mirror clips, nice and simple. Because I'm picture framing, I'm also gonna use a few brad nails. So I've got my compressor here. Um, but if you don't have a compressor, you could just screw it together. So keep that in mind. We like to try to keep our project simple here. So let's get busy. We're gonna nail and cut this together. I'm not gonna take you through the step by step, but basically you wanna make a frame that's just a little bit smaller than your mirror. Make the back side nice and flush, and when you're done building, you can lay the mirror on top, screw in some mirror clips, and you're good to go. So the key to this whole project is to measure the size of your mirror, which is an actual 16 inches, and make sure that the framework that you're working with here, interior, is less than that. And we've gone with a 15 and a quarter inch interior measurement. You can see so that when my mirror sits on it, I've got about 3 eighths on each side. And that'll be perfect to make sure that we never have a problem sliding out. It also cuts down how precise you need to be when building. So we're gonna fire in a couple of brads just to get everything nice and tight. Again, because all this is rustic, we're not as concerned with how we line it up as much as we are making sure the back is flush. So just nice and pressure on the floor. So I'm more concerned with how I'm lined up on the inside of this frame. Okay. And there we go, we have our frame, okay? All right, so because we're using rustic lumber, we do not want to trust the end cuts, they're square. We're building a door, so all of our joints have to be perfectly square. Make sure you have your table saw locked in position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pre-cut all of the ends, perfect 90s, and that'll help when we're building to make sure everything stays square and you know just solve a lot of pain as we get down the road. Okay, so the first rule of design is it has to function, right? So the barn door, why in the world are they popular? It's because, oh, we'll tell you all about this while Nate's cutting lumber. The reason we like barn doors in a design perspective is because we can close a space and separate it from another space. And at the same time, by sliding across the wall, we remove the need for a swing or something folding door and restricting your access into that space. So by having a barn door here, we solve the problem of making a room that's 10 by 10 and making it feel like it's 10 by 12. That's key. So if you have a small bedroom, putting on one of these doors is awesome for getting you that extra space in your room. So now you, you have an extra couple feet to mess around with. The other thing we're gonna do with our door is we're gonna solve the problem of where are we gonna put our full length mirror? Because in this room, it would have gone probably on this wall. 
So now we're going to have a full-length mirror in the door, and it'll be a dressing mirror, and it can slide back and forth, killing two birds with one stone. The other thing is, since we're building it ourselves, we're saving money. The door rail system is about 135. Materials here, mirror included, are about 100 bucks. So for 250, you can make your own custom barn door to fit any space. It's a lot better than going to the store and buying these things. The kits are up to $500 for something that looks rustic. This is rustic, and you did it yourself, saving money. Okay, so the way that we're going to build this thing so that we can keep everything exactly square and not have any issues is we're going to use, rely on the fact that we cut this edge 90, and we're just going to go with flush. Okay, here, we're going to hold the wood together as we come along, get up to here, and then we're going to measure what I call eyeball measuring. I'm going to put a pencil mark right off the edge of the wood, about the same thickness as my saw blade, and I'm going to tell my son when he cuts this to start cutting here and then slide the wood in until he's eating all of the pencil and then cut the board. Well, here he is. Let's let him in on the secret. So what I've done is I've got flush and I'm coming right up to this point. So when you're cutting, I want you to cut to hit the blade here, okay? And then slide the wood towards the blade until the last bit of pencil is eaten just at, right at that point, okay? And then finish that cut nice and square. And we're gonna use that process the whole time. So every time you see these thick pencil marks, it's the same kind of cutting style, okay? Yep. Beautiful, thanks buddy. We wanted the back of the door flush, so we'll just work off the floor. Always be careful when you're nailing on the next to the floor that you don't hold your nail around an angle because you don't want to fire a nail into your finished floor. <laughs> Every eight to 10 inches will be plenty. Remember, once we have this assembled, we're gonna be using mending plates on the back to hold this all together really nice and tight. When I'm picking my wood, I like to pick as much unique detail that the wood allows as possible. That detail is what makes wood wood. I'd hate to eliminate it to try to make it look like something manufactured. Here you go, buddy. And remember, don't panic when you're assembling this. This is rough cut lumber. There's gonna be knot holes. There's gonna be imperfections, maybe a little warp. You're gonna have gaps. All of these things work into the overall look. So when you're finished, you're gonna have something that looks like it was built in a barn. Remember when they build barns, they don't make them perfect. They just get them up and get them done. So having a little imperfections actually assists you in getting the overall design. If you make it too perfect, it just kind of looks like it's punched out of a press and you don't want that. Okay, here we go. Now we're going flush. And when I like it. Of course, it's helpful to have someone standing on your wood to keep everything pressed to the floor. Quick mint temporary fix until we get the mending plates on. I'm just throwing a couple of nails in under 45 just to hold this door together when I go to flip it over. So in this particular design, just to do a picture frame with the barn board, one by eights wasn't wide enough. So we talked about, look at options here. Oh, we could add some picture framing trim. We ended up needing to trim inside and outside to buy us the extra, basically four inches that we needed to make this door. You might have a door now that has a jam and casings. Maybe you want to replace it Finish it all off with drywall, you'll find your hole is 34 inches wide, and you might need a custom door made too. You can buy doors in 34 and 36, but you sure won't buy a door like this. This is unique in every sense of the word. That's a complete screw up, eh? It's kind of like a live edge look here that's been finished. But for our purposes, the back side is still 7 eighths wide. I'm gonna use it, because I love the character that comes in that piece of wood. Look at that, nothing wrong with that. As long as the outside dimension of what you're building is still working out for you, why not use something that otherwise would have been a reject? So when you're doing something like this, these systems are basically designed for an eight foot ceiling. So if you go with a standard door size and standard ceiling, nice and simple. In a basement, we have to be careful because we want to cover the hole but not go so high that the hardware is not going to function. So we're just taking a look at the instructions and the clearances and maybe having to do a last minute design change. 
So the instructions for the hardware was basically a picture of how to install. They had no dimensions, no clearances, no numbers to work with. So what we have to do is take the parts out. Here's our rail. And what we have to do is now attach the math to this. So when I hang my door, I need clearance that I can come over top of the rail and set my door on it. Okay, so I don't need much. So I'm just going to line this up. In a perfect world, I'd like a couple inches to the ceiling just to be, just to be safe. And here's my hole for attaching to the door. So split the difference, the height of my door, basically three quarters of an inch from the rail. So three quarters plus seven. So seven and three quarters is my clearance for the top of the door. Now here, that takes my door height to this point as a max. So I've got about an inch and a half to play with here to bring me down to just above my door. So that's nice. So now that I'm measuring my door, I want to finish off about 83 at the highest. 82 would be nice, but I also am going to give myself a one inch clearance off the floor. So 81 and a half becomes 82 and a half. Okay. So that's where I want my door to finish. Take an inch off. 81 and a half inches X outside to outside. So in this situation, you have two options. Get a couple guys to give you a hand. Carry this whole door over to your miter saw and cut your inside miters. Could be a little tricky. Or just take the time and the precaution. Take your hammer. It's only brad nails. Take this off. Clean the nails out from the inside. Cut it and then reinstall. And that's what we're going to do. Nice and simple. Be gentle. You want to be able to save this for the next time. There we go. Perfect. What we want to do is have the same gap. It's a beveled mirror. So what we want to do is have the same gap all the way around. We're actually going to use the screws that came in the package. So the screws that we're going to use are right here. Came in the package with the mirror clips. They're a little long to the point where they might stick through, but because of the thickness of the mirror clip, if we go like that, you'll see that it won't come through the other side. So we're going to be just fine. It's also nice and skinny, and it's a Phillips bit. Okay. Okay, so we just want to put these in until they're snug. We don't want to over tighten. We could risk splitting the plastic and then coming through the other side. There we go. Okay, so we're just going to lay out our mending plates. We got six. This is just to tie the, the basic frame together. Um, the hardware for the overhead is going to be attached to a 1x8 up the other end. So by using mending plates to tie this together, brad nails is kind of a temporary fix. This will help keep everything nice and tight and square for a long time to come. Okay, don't over screw. Okay. We don't want the screw coming through the other side. That is a 1 inch and the board is kind of a 7 8 That's it. Yeah, don't drop it, right? <laughs> That's the time to have a problem. Let's move it to the side. Okay, so here we go. That's the basics for how to build your own custom barn door. Stay tuned, because next week we're gonna have a video show you how to take some of this gorgeous old vintage looking hardware and how to hang it in your room. Oh yeah, and make sure if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do so. We got tons of stuff in the library and there's new videos every week. So looking forward to seeing you hit the button. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos. By all means, or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.